and for this online talk. First of all, I would like to express my thanks to dear Pelin Hojam, dear Zubeda Hanum and Medipol University Department of Architecture for bringing us together and thank you for your joining my online talk today. I hope all is well with you while we have been still going through COVID-19 and its influences on our lives. Today, I will talk about public health and te health technologies in housing for the post-pandemic world, and in particular, my focal point will be the architectural response by the United States to housing and public health in relation to COVID-19. And if you ask why in particular the United States, because as you know very well, the United States is one of the hardest hit architecture communities and countries by COVID-19 in the world, as the data clearly show this fact. So by focusing on this country, I would like to offer you a perspective on how one of the hardest hit countries by COVID-19 and its architecture community in scientific research, practice, profession and education have been trying to overcome the influence of this pandemic on people's living spaces and how to search new formulation for the post-pandemic time. And during my online talk, you will see each reference and links of research studies, uh, knowledge resources and projects on relevant slide. And if you would like to know more information on these resources, I can send uh, their links by email to you after my online talk and you can visit their links. And in addition, you can always contact me by email to get more and updated knowledge resources on my online talk topic today. And my online talk will be divided into four parts. Firstly, I would like to share some recent research reports and surveys on housing prepared by American Institute of Architects, one of the oldest and leading organizations in architecture profession. Secondly, I will focus on some recent research projects, significant topics and knowledge resources on public health, housing and technology. And thirdly, as one of the vital issues during COVID-19, I would like to give some information on air quality at home. And finally, I will introduce you Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, one of the leading institutions on public health in the United States and its knowledge resources in relation to COVID-19 that are universal and can be helpful to everyone regardless of their physical locations to protect themselves from this infectious disease. And to begin with, I would like to indicate two points. One, my online talk does not include a research, a project or a speculative comment to predict the future. Instead of this, it aims to give you information with respect to current situation in public health and housing issues. In this respect, I think that a sentence by an MIT architectural design studio in this academic term summarizes the aim of my talk very well. It cannot predict the future, but will be provided with recent uh, state of research about emerging trends. And secondly, you know very well, there are different types of housing in architecture. In my online talk, my focal point will be living spaces for people, regardless of its different type. And now let's look at the response by American Institute of Architects to COVID-19 in relation to housing. Established in 1850... Sorry, for interrupting, but there's, it's one time someone removed me from the meeting. If you can, just make the doctors organizers, so only you, you can remove the people. Can I continue? Yeah. Uh, sure. 
Established in 1857, the American Institute of Architects, or in short AIA, is a professional organization to support, promote, and coordinate the architecture profession and architecture practice in the United States. And during COVID-19, this institution has prepared and released several guidances, documents, and knowledge resources for safe offices, schools, retail stores, multifamily housing, and senior living communities in relation to this infectious disease. Among them, I would like to focus on recommendations for multifamily housing and then senior living communities. In this report uh, by AIA on multifamily housing, the AIA underlines six space types that demand an attention for an infectious disease. They are entry, lobby, circulation, residential dwelling unit, services, amenities. And as this report points out, there are two important factors to be able to analyze the risk associated with each of these six space types. They are duration of exposure and proximity of individuals. If you look at this research report by AIA Closer, multifamily entry, lobby, and circulations typically have a lower risk of transmission despite the high frequency of their use because occupants do not usually spend extended time in the spaces. On the other hand, amenity spaces such as for meals, games, celebrations, and other activities involving multiple residents and visitors have a higher risk for transmission of an infectious disease because they are typically utilized for a longer time period. And on the slide from the same report, you see a suite style apartment with separate bathroom and bedroom configuration in order to enable easier isolation if illness strikes. And with this context, I would like to share a research study by Harvard University Schools of Public Health with you. This school is the first professional public health training program in the country and its history goes back to 1930s. And one of the research studies by its research team in collaboration with building owners, facility directors and real estate professionals is nine foundations for a healthy building. These nine foundations are ventilation, air quality, thermal health, moisture, dust and pets, safety and security, water quality, noise, lighting and views. And if you click on each of these foundations, you can read related knowledge and suggestions for a healthy building. For instance, as one of the vital topics for COVID-19 for ventilation, it is recommended to filter outdoor and recirculated air with a minimum efficiency of 75% for all particle size, including nano, and to avoid outdoor air intakes at street level or near other uh, outdoor sources for pollutants. And in addition to these nine foundations, now I would like to share healthy building networks with you. I think that their resources might be helpful for your projects and research studies. Published by a group of practitioners, experts, scientists uh, in architecture and in public health in 2019, this network aims to support and promote healthy building practices through research, data, education, and so on. This is their production uh, section for a healthy house. If you click one of them, you reach detailed information on several building materials, their contents, and if they are healthy or not, with some suggestions by experts in architecture and health.
And now, in relation to housing and public health in the United States during COVID-19, one of the other critical discussion topics has been senior living communities. And I think that this is also one of the most critical issues in Turkey during COVID-19 and demands an architectural attention. And this is why I have decided to focus on this topic. According to IA research report, more than a million of Americans have been living in assisted living communities and more than half of their residents are 85 or older and they have been uh, under high risk during COVID-19. In light of this critical picture, AIA has also released safety strategies for these living spaces in order to be able to reduce and prevent the spread of COVID-19. In this report, AIA elaborates its strategies for COVID-19 and for any infectious disease. For instance, providing touchless access at common doors, providing touchless toilets, touchless paper towel, touchless paper uh, soap dispensers and sanitizing uh, stations, and providing areas, supplies and assistance for uh, disinfecting wheelchairs adding hand washing stations, limitate, uh, limiting areas of public visitation, and providing in-room dining area for family visitation. And as you see on the slide, AIA elaborates its recommendations for senior living communities under 18 topics. And one of the other important information about hand washing, if people have to touch taps after cleaning their hands, the purpose of their hand washing is defeated. In other words, you should not touch taps after your hand washing, and this is one of the reasons to suggest touchless tap by public health experts. And one of the critical architectural spaces at senior living communities is dining rooms because in architecture, this architecture space has been using by senior community regularly and has a high risk for COVID-19. As you see on the slide, AIA has released its recommendations for this space as well, such as sliding doors with elbow to push plate activated, reducing amount of equipment in order to provide more spacing, enhancing acoustic treatment for occupants to be heard with face mask, ensuring ventilation system to operate regularly, reservation or seating assigned to an application, and providing menu on reservation system. In relation to these topics, now I would like to bring into focus a recent research by MIT scientists on how to estimate the risk of COVID-19 exposure in different indoor settings as one of the critical issues. And now I would like to show you how to use it. In order to use these tools, you need information on the number of people, the size of space, the kinds of activities such as if face masks are worn or not, and the ventilation and filtration rates. On the slide, you see their COVID-19 indoor safety guideline. When you enter your information into the system, such as room specification or human behavior details, as you see on the slide, the system gives you information on maximum how many people should be in the given space and how long they can stay in that space after an infected person enters into the space. And now, if we turn our attention to housing, AIA has also published its House Design Trend Survey based on project data by architecture firm in 2020 during COVID-19. According to the survey, the top trend in house design is home office. 
And following home office, other top spaces respectively are outdoor living spaces, additional multifunctional room, mud room, in love suite, exercise room, and three season port for spring, summer, and fall. In other words, home office space seems to be one of the leading expectations by users for the post-pandemic life. According to a research by Gensler, a global design and architecture firm in the country since 1965, there are four modes for understanding work with a high level of employee engagement, and they are focus, collaborate, learn, and socialize. For a home office space design, one of the important questions is how these four modes can be applied into a home environment. And needless to say, there is not one best solution for a home office space design. However, some essential requirements can be listed like this. Adaptable layout and flexibility in spatial arrangement, healthy fresh air, acoustic and sound control, natural light, visual and physical connections to the outdoors, reducing distractions, security for business guests into the building, and technological infrastructure to support residents increasing demand for remote, remote work through technology. And on the slide, as an example of a home office space, you see a secondary unit attached to a primary dwelling unit with a shared entry. It can function as a home office, study space, or as an extra bedroom when family grows, and it can also function independently from the main living unit or can connect with it with their shared entry. And in addition to public health, technology is another top field to offer new and innovative solutions for architecture and people. And within this context, first of all, I would like to give you some information on recent surveys and projects on advanced technology in building construction in order to reduce human touch and any potential public health risk. According to United States Chamber of Commerce Commercial Construction Index in 2020, contractors prefer advanced technology for imposing job site safety, for increased labor productivity, and for better management of project schedule. And before COVID-19, a scientific research team at the MIT Media Lab began to develop some projects to make progress in digital construction, for instance, the digital construction platform. As this research team indicates in their paper in 2017, contemporary construction techniques are slow, labor-intensive, expensive, and constrained to primarily rectilinear forms. On the other hand, unlike from these features, the digital construction platform developed by them is an automated construction system, fast, and capable of customized on-site fabrication of architectural scale structures using real-time environmental data. On the slide, uh, you see their uh, digital construction platform drawings. It is mobile and self-contained. And it is also a battery powered with a few solar panels on it, and it has uh, an option for more solar panels to be attached. And its construction technique is simple. There is a sprayer at the end of the small arm, and you can program digital construction platform to print anything you like. And to explore its potential for on-site fabrication, an architectural test print of a 14.6 meter diameter open dome was manufactured with a print time of 13 and a half hours. And another digital project for construction site was developed by OpenUp, uh, another MIT-affiliated startup. 
using uh, 360 degree cameras and computer vision to create comprehensive and time stamp digital replicas of construction site, they offer analytical solution to help their users in order to track progress and to search for objects on their, uh, on their job site. Users can teleport into the construction site in order to see actual reality there, and they can also see what was there anytime in the past, such as yesterday or five years ago. In this way, this solution helps people in the construction industry to, industry to improve accountability, minimize travel, and reduce public health risk. As you see on the slide in the construction site, you should connect a camera to their application and then you can take your photograph and you can pin it uh, your, into your plans. And you, you can walk uh, to the next location, you can take another photo and pin the plan and you can repeat these steps. According to Open Space Team, it is possible to capture up to the 10,000 square feet per hour. And it can be claimed that uh, these digital construction techniques, methods and applications might have some positive impacts on architectural design practice, organization of its construction and reducing the transmission of any infectious disease among construction team members for the post-pandemic world. And now, uh, if you focus on housing, public health and technology, with this pandemic experience, another rising field is machine learning. In particular, with, uh, along with data science, utilization, utilizations of machine learning has been offering some beneficial information for design architects and urban designers in recent time. For instance, now I would like to bring into focus a recent research project conducted by the Harvard University Kennedy School Innovation Field Lab. Research questions of this project is how to predict housing related public uh, health problems by using city data. And as its research team indicates, housing is a leading social determinant in infection risk and transmission of COVID-19. And the use of uh, housing data to improve public health is urgently needed. In light of this, data such as overcrowding or other high-risk housing conditions can help cities and community partners for better support uh, residents and to plan for resources allocation. In this project, research team has integrated housing code violation data and administrative city data by using machine learning in order to understand where housing related health risks are. And if you ask what housing code is, this is the backbone of an existing healthy uh, homes program. These codes set the minimum uh, standards that must be met by all housing to protect the health of its residents. For instance, for the state of Massachusetts, there is a state sanitary code and it includes the housing code checklist in order to help people to protect their right to safe housing and all housing must at least meet these codes. In addition to this, administrative city data, such as the age, value, size of homes, police or fire calls, and so on, may obtain from police and fire departments and from other sources linked by address. And by focusing on data from housing code and administrative city data, the research team examined the city of Chelsea in Massachusetts because it has been especially hard hit by COVID-19 pandemic. It is densely populated and it is one of the poorest uh, cities in Massachusetts. And according to their findings, top three critical outcomes are uh, critical outcomes are the percentage of any violation is 54 and uh, 
the percentage of higher risk violation is 45 and the percentage of um, overcrowding is uh, 29. And then based on their data and findings, the research team created their maps to show any violation, high risk violation and overcrowding in Chelsea. Such an effort can be seen as a good start point to rehabilitate some public health problems for a healthy and better housing design and planning in the city. And now I would like to focus on uh, telehealth and telemedicine at home um, as these practices began to gain a momentum in recent times. As COVID-19 experience has showed us, telehealth and telemedicine at home have a significant, very significant potential for the future living environment of people. Because in this way, patients can consult doctors from the comfort of their homes, and this is also this also reduces unnecessary hospital visits and it can help to provide more available hospital bed when they are necessary. And according to data in the United States, approximately 1,629,000 telehealth encounters occurred in the country in the first three months of 2020, and it means 50% increase if one compares with the same period in 2019. And in light of its potential, integrated design understanding between architecture and healthcare industry seems to become much more important than the past in order to support delivery of medical expertise to people in a more efficient way. Within this context, I would like to clarify the definitions of telehealth and telemedicine, although they are used interchangeably. According to Center for Disease Control and Prevention, one of the leading public health institutions in the country, telehealth refers to broader definition than telemedicine. Telehealth is the use of electronic information and telecommunication technologies to support and promote long distance clinical health care, patient and professional health related education and public health and health administration. On the other hand, telemedicine is practice of medicine using electronic communication, information technology or other means between doctor in one location and patient in another location with or without an intervening health care provider. Despite there are some differences, both of them are promising public health tools in particular for medically underserved population. And it should not be forgotten that they are not about technology, they are about people. In other words, there is need to create spaces for telehealth and telemedicine that foster human connections, and that's where creative design understanding, understanding comes in in relation to space needs, privacy, acoustics, lighting, gaze angle and camera distance, interior surfaces and equipment associated issues. For instance, it is suggested to choose a quiet locations, a quiet location in living space to minimize the exposure to, under, uh, to background noise. And tele telemedicine space should allow direct front lighting and white light is much more appropriate. And medium blue or light gray are suggested for proper rendering of color and facilitating picture clarity. And for these health technologies, one of the problems is the access by senior people. And for this issue in the country, there are some organizations to provide seniors and low income communications with devices, instructions and free tech support to connect them to their physicians and doctors through telehealth and telemedicine. 
In addition to this, there is also some independent and non-profit organization to develop guidance to planning, design and construction of residential health, including telehealth and telemedicine. And this is Facility Guidelines Institute. And if you would like to know more information on these institutions, you can visit official links on the slide later. And uh, with COVID-19 pandemic experience, air quality has been one of the major focal points at homes because people began to spend most of their time at their living spaces and they began to pay more attention to this issue. In relation to this topic, I would like to introduce you another institution and its knowledge resources. This is American Society of Heating, Refrigerating Air and Air Conditioning Engineers. As you see on the slide, this institution has released its residential guidance during COVID-19. Let's look at this guidance briefly. For thermal comfort, approximately 20 and 25 Celsius and between 40 and 60 percent relative humidity are recommended. If the house is not equipped with mechanical system, Opening multiple windows is an acceptable alternative for a single family home. For restrooms, it is recommended to operate exhaust fans in bathrooms and toilets, preferably continuously. And toilet lids should normally remain closed, especially prior to flashing. In addition to this, it is also recommended to use air profiles with HEPA um, particle filters and ultraviolet disinfection in order to be able to remove suspended small airborne particles in this space and minimizing the use of open windows at multifamily homes in order to limit the potential transfer of infective air from nearby apartments and to create an isolation space for infected household members. At that point, if you ask what HEPA filter is, HEPA means High Efficiency Particulate Air Filter, and these filters are used within all biological safety cabinets in order to prevent airborne pathogens from entering the occupied environment. For more and Turkish information on HEPA filters, you can also visit the page of Tem uh, Chambers of Mechanical Engineering in Turkey as well. In addition to HEPA filter, if you ask what ultraviolet disinfection is, I would like to give some brief info, give you brief information of ultraviolet germicidal irradiation. Here, germicidal refers to a substance or agent that kills the germs. Ultraviolet germicidal irradiation, uh, this is the use of ultraviolet energy to kill bacterial organism. In particular, upper room ultraviolet germicidal irradiation is one of the alternative ways to kill COVID-19 suggested by Center for Disease Control and Prevention. Upper room ultraviolet germicidal irradiation refers to a disinfection zone of ultraviolet energy that is located above people in the rooms they occupy. In this way, airborne pathogens are killed once they receive an appropriate amount of ultraviolet energy. And this particle, these particles remain in the air, but they are no longer infectious. In relation to this issue, one of the important points to know is that the COVID-19 virus can only be destroyed by directly exposing it to ultra ultraviolet light whose spectrum range from 200 and 280 nanometers. And finally, I would like to introduce you one of the leading public health institutions in the country. This is the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, or in short, CDC. 
CDC is one of the top official agencies for health prevention, promotion and preparedness against any health concern and risk in the United States since its establishment in 1946. And it has been regularly releasing its updated knowledge resources and scientific research papers on COVID-19. And these knowledge resources can be beneficial for design criteria of your architectural design projects and research studies, I think. For instance, as you see on the slide, one of these knowledge resources by CDC is about housing units. Prepared by experts in the field, in the section, you can find detailed information on household checklist and how to live in a close quarters or in a shared housing while experiencing a pandemic or an infectious disease. And finally, None of us can predict the future, but it seems reasonable to expect that there will be a continued focus on health and wellness on or living spaces. And as Joseph Allen, Program Core Director at the Harvard University Schools of Public Health indicates, every system has been fundamentally changed due to the pandemic and health first is new expectation going forward. Needless to say, architecture is never an exception within critical context. And on the slide, you see a recent book by Joseph Allen and his, with his academic colleague, uh, John McComber, Healthy Buildings. And this book can be seen as another sign of the rising importance of indoor, healthy indoor spaces in our lives and for the post-pandemic world. And thank you for your listening. I cannot see uh, all of you, uh, but maybe. Thank you. Uh, is there any question to Meral Ekinjolu? And uh, I forgot uh, you. Uh, you didn't uh, tell about your yourself. My short biography. Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, I am a graduate of Istanbul Technical University and obtained my bachelor, master and PhD degree from Istanbul Technical University. And for my PhD dissertation research, uh, I came to Harvard University History of Art and Architecture PhD program for my first PhD dissertation. And then uh, as a second PhD dissertation research in the United States, then I came to Columbia University Graduate School of Architecture, Planning and Preservation PhD program. And then I went back to Istanbul Technical University to complete my PhD. And after obtaining my PhD, I came to Massachusetts Institute of Technology, History, Theory and Criticism of Architecture program to conduct my advanced uh, academic research project uh, to build my new expertise field after my PhD for two years. And at MIT Department of Architecture, I conducted the first and advanced uh, academic research project on Turkish and Turkish women architects career history in the United States and the first and advanced academic research project on first and early women architects career history at Princeton University Schools of Architecture. And after this, all of this process, public health and architecture uh, are among my new research field. I would like to say a few things. Um, due to the uh, time length of my uh, presentation and online talk, I introduced you uh, some leading architectural institutions and their research report and survey. If you would like to know much more detailed information, you can contact me anytime by email to get more and updated knowledge resources, research and projects uh, on public health, architecture or housing in relation to this topic. And um, you can uh, request uh, the, the links of their uh, projects and uh, knowledge resources on my presentation by email whenever you want. Thank you. 
Is there any question, my friends? No question. In Turkish, if, if you want, in Turkish, you can uh, ask Dr. Meral Ekinjolo in English. So may I ask a question to start a conversation between us uh, in Turkish or in English? Uh, half and half. Okay, first of all, English and then Turkish, okay? Okay. Um, after this presentation and talk and after your COVID-19 experience, in particular, these questions is for, uh, is for uh, architecture students uh, with us. Uh, what are the most critical uh, topics when you spend your time at your home during COVID-19? And according to the most critical issues while you have been spending your time at home during COVID-19, what can be your suggestions for architecture design practice of a home for the post-pandemic world. And now I would like to ask in Turkish. Um, sevgili arkadaşlar, ben şunu çok merak ediyorum ve aslında sizlerle birlikte olmaktan çok heyecanlıyım. Çünkü mimarlık öğrencileri şu anda bizim pandemi sonrası geleceğimiz. Sizlerin fikirleri, yorumları, eleştirileri bizler için çok değerli. Hepimiz için çok değerli. Covid-19, Covid-19 sırasında Evde geçirdiğiniz zaman dilimi içinde bir mimarlık öğrencisi olarak sizler için en kritik mesela bir ya da iki husus neydi ve bununla bağlantılı olarak e, pandemi sonrasındaki e, bir ev tasarımı için önerileriniz neler olurdu? Bir yer kaldırdı ama göremiyorum. Hocam ben el kaldırdım. Öncelikle benim şu yönde oldu. Ee, i̇ki odam olmasına rağmen maketlerimi koyacak yer pek bulamadım. Genelde yerde çalıştığımız için maket yaparken onda bir tık zorlandım. Belki okulda olsa, stüdyolarda olsak bu kadar hani bel ve sırt ağrısı çekmeyecekti. Ee, hareket alanımda daraldığı için e, bir de çok çalıştığımız için dönem boyunca bir spor yapma isteği çok fazla oldu. Yani pandemiden sonra bence her e, evin oda bir kısmını spor alanı olarak ayrılmalı. Fakat Türkiye'de bu çok fazla mümkün değil metrekare e, alanın darlığından dolayı. E, bu şekilde oldu hocam benim ihtiyaçlarım. O halde e, evde çalışma alanı için e, özellikle ekstra bir mekanın ihtiyacı e, söz konusu diyebiliriz. Kesinlikle hocam. Bir kişi daha var sanırım. Yes, hi teacher, it's me. It's Sude from first class of interior architecture. Um, I think in the COVID-19 uh period um every room should have uh, its own toilet and inside it's so important every room yeah uh because of the isolations time that's why i think it should be like that and uh, there should be uh, another thing is there should be something like a hobby room or a gym room in every home there is my idea <laughs> Thank you for sharing your idea. You're welcome. Rava. Thank you. Rava. Hi. Uh, I, I think that in the pandemic uh, time, I thought that we should have a studio at home or at any home. We should have a studying area uh, or maybe just like a library area because this would make me feel better and uh, I would uh, feel in the mood of studying much more because I used to study in studios and also in libraries not at home not in my room it was I will 
Thank you for sharing your uh, idea with us. Simge. Merhabalar. Merhaba. Benim düşüncem şöyle bizim evimizin e, çok şükür ki dışarıda bir alanı var, bir bahçesi var. Nefes almak istediğiniz zaman çıkabileceğimiz. Yani ben daha önce hiç böyle apartman hayatı yaşamadım, hiç apartmanda yaşamadım. Hep böyle e, bir açık alanımız vardı ve özellikle kapanmalarda bu açık alan e, bana çok faydalı oldu. Hani içeride bunu aldığımda oraya çıkıp orada nefes alabiliyordum, güneşe çıkabiliyordum spor yapabiliyordum. Bir evin bence dışarıyla bağlantısı olan bir alanı ol, olmalı. Yani sadece dört duvar arasını ne yaşam mi? alanı olarak e, sınırlamamalıyız. Açık bir alan. Çünkü bu insan ihtiyacı. Ne olacağını bilemeyiz. O yüzden açık bir alan bence her evde e, mümkün. Yani mümkün olmalı. Hı. Gerekli. En çok üzeri vurgulanan e, konulardan bir tanesi şu anda e, housing e, e, ve home office space ile ilgili olarak. Teşekkürler Simge. Ben teşekkür ederim. Any other questions? Good afternoon. Nice. <gülüyor> yes. Uh, actually, I think that uh, uh, we need more uh, awareness lecture for people around us, especially architecture students, because they don't know how much uh, architecture needs time. It's like not just a subject we take it in its hour and it's it's finished. It needs more than that time, and maybe it takes two days, one day, one week. It depends on what they. Uh, they want from us and like that that's not what i want to say thank you thank you sude büşra sude büşra ceyla teacher i talked okay pardon another question my friends No. Hocam, actually, I just want to add something, um, which is I agree with Sude about the part uh, when she said that uh, there should be uh, toilets in every room, uh, because like uh, sometimes, uh, for example, when families get infected, not all of the family members get ill. So it's uh, and here uh, mostly houses in Istanbul are have, uh, for example, one or two uh, toilets. Not more than that, so it's actually a problem. And also, I want to uh, add something, which is the insulation between the rooms. I guess after this COVID uh, period, maybe uh, people should consider, uh, for example, um, installing uh, such insulations, for example, for sound, because uh, since online edu education started, uh, several family members at the same house are having, for example, classes at the same time. And like it's causing uh, somehow a confusion uh, for the people. So yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have any question, Meral, to students? Benim başka bir sorum yok ama şunu tekrar etmek istiyorum. Ee, aramızdaki bu e, pardon, aramızdaki bu iletişimin e, bu sunum sonrasında da devam etmesinden memnuniyet duyarım. E-mailim Pelin hocamızda var. E, kamu sağlığı, e, mimarlık, e, teknoloji bu gibi konularda e, Bundan sunum sonrasında da aklınıza gelen soruları ya da buradan edinmek istediğiniz bilgi kaynakları olursa o konularda da her zaman iletişim kurabiliriz. Bunu söylemek istiyorum. Teşekkürler Rava. Do you want to say something? Uh, yes teacher, I've got a question. Okay. But it's not really about the topics that we talked about. It's something more like personal. <laughs> Is that okay? Okay. okay. Uh, me as a student, I I can't really uh, give all my time and effort to just architecture. So what can I do? Like how, as an uh, a student of uh, architecture uh, major, how can I 
how can I say like manage my time for projects for work and also life because I have kind of karma karmic weird lifestyle and I really want to improve myself at my studies I don't want it to be that uh, Tembel student so this is what I'm asking for how can I improve myself as a student This is a very personal question. <laughs> yes, I knew it. I, this is the reason why I said it's kind of personal. If, if you don't want to answer, it's OK. Or maybe you can leave me with something that you have left. It's OK. First of all, I think that um, um, you should love uh, and architecture is uh, your passion and your priority and the management of time is a very personal issue and uh, it's, it has to do with your personal discipline and um, this is a very personal question so uh, I don't know how to respond to your question but for instance for myself Architecture is rather than a um, profession, discipline, or um, the scientific field. This is my passion. And I have been living with architecture in my life. Architecture is not an occupation for me. This is a lifestyle for me and um, my priority. So if you have a pro architecture project or if you have a um, scientific re research in architecture to complete it, it's my priority and I have a schedule um, prepared by myself and step by step. For instance, if my according to my schedule, if I say, for instance, within one month, I should complete this research. So it's about my personal discipline and this is my priority. And at the end of the one month, uh, I should complete it because uh, if it is difficult to um, discipline yourself, maybe uh, you can think on your mind that uh, when you complete how you feel so satisfied, how you feel so uh, fulfilled with architecture and what would be its reward at the end of this process? What is the gift at the end of this process? This is all I say about you about your question. Thank you so much. I think I think we came to the end of this talk. <laughs> yes. It was a great pleasure uh, to meet all of you. And I uh, Is there any question? Thank you. Uh, Çok bir soru sorabilir miyim hocam? Ben üniversiteden <gülüyor> Bengi Atun. Tabii, tabii buyurun. Ee, şimdi evlerimiz tam küçülmeye başladı diye düşünürken Hani işte minimal yaşayalım, az eşyamız olsun, çok yere ihtiyacımız yok diye düşünmeye başlarken sanki e, tersini şimdi düşünmeye başlıyoruz gibi geliyor bana. Bu konuda ne düşünüyorsunuz? Ben kendi hayatımdan da yola çıkarak bunu söylüyorum. E, ne düşünüyorsunuz bu konuda? Bu evlerin tekrar bir büyüme mail şeyine, trendine girmesi ne mümkün görüyor musunuz? Ee, ne düşünüyorsunuz bu konuda? E, sorunuzu ben, e, bu da biraz kısmen kişisel bir yanıt olacak ama e, evlerin e, büyümesi ya da küçülmesinden ziyade e, son zamanlarda Covid ile birlikte e, multifunctional multi housing daha çok gündeme gelen bir şey yani evin büyüklüğü ya da küçüklüğünden ziyade birden çok fonksiyona özellikle işte home office gibi ya da evde çocukların online eğitimlerinin olması vesaire gibi bütün bunları dikkate alarak flexibility and Flex, modular flexibility uh, and adjustability of layout and um, multifunctional housing design uh, bunlar uh, daha çok gündeme gelen konular yani um, Şöyle söyleyeyim yani e, nitelik olarak e, nicelik olarak hani büyümek ya da küçülmek değil de hane halkının ihtiyacına 
ihtiyaçlarına yanıt verecek şekilde çok işleyicilik ve e, esnek e, functional solution daha fazla gündeme gelen konular diye düşünüyorum. Teşekkür ederim hocam. Sunum için de çok teşekkürler. Çok faydalıydı. Sağ olun. Teşekkürler. Sevgili Meral Hocam çok teşekkür ederiz katıldığınız için. Ben teşekkür Sadece ederim. Güzel bilgileri paylaştığınız için. Çok teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Bir başka seminerde inşallah görüşmek üzere. İnşallah. Çok teşekkürler Medipol Üniversitesi adına. Çok teşekkür ediyoruz. Sağ olun. Thank you so much for presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Thank you for your training. Bye. Bye. Teşekkür ederiz. Okay. So much. Thank you. Thank you. Çok teşekkür ederiz. Çok teşekkür ederiz. Ben teşekkür ederim. Sağ olun.